The Monarch series is brought to you by Sissons. Color by Sissons. And Netherlands Insurance. Proud supporter of the arts. Welcome to this week's episode of The Monarch. Now, in this week's episode, I got to reconnect with a very good friend of mine, the nine-time Calypso Monarch, Edson Ajamo Mitchell. Of course, you all know him as King Man or King Ajamo. We had some great times catching up and also touching on a different side as he shared his experience in the middle of a health crisis. Here's my conversation for this episode of The Monarch with King Ajamo. Welcome back. So as promised for this week's Monarch episode, I have with me the one and only Mr. Edson Ajamo Mitchell. Ajamo has captured the title a total of nine times. Let me tell you, it spans from way back in 87, right up to 2015. It's incredible. I'm so happy to be joining this space, joining him now and sharing this space with him sharing our conversation today with you viewing this program right now so mr king man welcome <laughs> <laughs> mr. <laughs> mr king man <laughs> you ruin it it's it either it. mr mitchell or king man hey, forget <laughs> mr ting and mr ting is coming down good but, you listen, but you're lucky i didn't say it's mitchell mbe <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> i know i know you're a very humble soul I, I, I truly admire that about you, but you know, you, you gotta pay, you know, you gotta pay the dues and pay credit where credit is due, sir. And hey, I, hey. I just want to say welcome. <laughs> Next, thank you very much. And from you, it's not a mouth thing, you know, because you show this all across the board, you know. Yes, yes. Every time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. So let's let's start our conversation today. I know you've done countless interviews about your life, your journey. Uh, as a musician, as a monarch, as a father, as a humanitarian, everything. But today we, 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 we're going to tap into a few, you know, topics and we're going to discuss a few things. Not some, some new, some may not be new to a lot of your fans and your followers. But I always like to start at the beginning. So a little birdie told me that as a little boy, you grew up singing in church. And like they say, the rest is history. So take us back to little Edson, you know, from Mama Cans, you know, growing up and, and falling in love with singing and performing. Share some of that that memory with us today. Well, well, Edson, I must say that it hadn't been much about uh, the, the church and singing in church as singing in school. I think in school is where it really started because um, I was always uh, an active member of the, of the school, the folk group in the school. And that, that, that came from a village because there were always these village groups that, you know, it was a little point, but I mean, I, I, had, I, had, I had this thing that 
catch people's attention, you know. So from a very early stage, I've been like entertaining, you know, wherever I am, entertainment will be there. But um, yeah, from, for the most part of it, uh, the singing part would have been more in the school in, and not the church. The church, I get more into playing, you know, in the church because um, I was an altar boy at, at also. And I remember they, they had, uh, in the church, I had the opportunity to learn to play the organ because they had this organ, one of those pedal organ. You got to pedal it for the sun to come out. You know? right. <laughs> and, and it's in the church. For me, being around the church, that's where I really got, you know, that springboard, you know. So they both, but if you're talking about the singing thing, I think the passion started developing from school, more than it. School days. And, yeah. and, when, and when you think about your, your career and, and the decades of you know, unforgettable, music and, and lyrically provoking you know um, compositions that you put out would you say there was someone and i'm not sure if there's anyone but would you say there was someone growing up as a young man considering getting into the competition aspect of things that would have inspired you or give you that little push to say you know what I want to try this. I want to get involved in the art form. You it's smile. Funny. I know that's yeah. It's funny you ask that because when I started, when I started singing calypso, or when I decided to start singing calypso, competition was never my intent. Actually, I didn't like competition. There was something about competition I was not interested. But if you ask in terms of how the the people who were influential who had influenced me in terms of making that step towards coming into the, the Calypso arena. Now, before I started singing, I've been a musician long before that. So I used to ask this, some of the Calypsonians, you know, with the, the arrangements and, you know, working out the cards and so for the song. And I've been doing that because I've been playing in bands here for a very early age, from maybe I was 13, 14 when I started playing in bands. You know, so I was pretty much around the, the uh, Calypso tent. But it wasn't until when I took a trip to Trinidad, and that was in 1980, the ending of 81, I think, 82, early 82. And uh, then I started visiting the tents in Trinidad. And there, there was this Calypsonian. I mean, he's still a Calypsonian. He's still around by the name of Scrunter. Yes. And Scrunter was uh, my, that was my idol. He, Scrunter was my hero. I mean, I love Mighty Sparrow. I adore the Mighty Sparrow. But Sparrow didn't have the influence in me getting into Calypso as much as uh, Scrunter did. Because for some reason, Scrunter, the, the way Scrunter, his style, you know, how he sing is very melodious. And Very that's something true. that always got my attention. And I thought <laughs> that, okay, if I want to sing, I want to be like this guy. <laughs> so when I went to Trinidad and I actually went to the tent, oh, that's where I got hypnotized there, you know? I got hooked, you know what I mean? And I, I came back home and in 1983, well, the truth is <laughs> I bought myself a guitar in Trinidad. And that was about the only thing with my clothes <laughs> that oh, I came wow. back with on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bought a guitar, I came home, and then I started writing, writing calypsos. But I've been writing long before that. But I used to write a lot of reggae songs. So you see, sometimes people meet me and they ask, uh, you know, when they hear my reggae song, so well, well, how, how did the transaction or the transition came about? There was no transition. I've been a musician all my life. All and along. reggae music is a music that I grew up on. Yeah. But when I came back and I said in 1983, I decided to sing and then I, I didn't want, I didn't care about no competition. You know who, who were really influential in terms of uh, pushing me into that competitive area, that spirit? There, there were some gentlemen that they were like big brothers to me yeah. in Westerhall. One guy named Mosley, we used to call him uh, Mamas. His awesome. name is uh, Simon Samuel. He lives in Toronto now. He's a good, 
it's a brother of mine, you know. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carl Rose, he's the, the, the manager, the owner of C CJ's Pest Control. Uh -huh. Mr. Carl Rose, he's still a really good friend of mine. I call him my brother. And uh, there's a young guy that sings now. He's, he goes by, his, by the name Lead Neck. Oh, boy. Yeah. He, <laughs> he's dad, you know, because he, Lead Neck got that from his dad. Lead, wow. Lead Neck dad was a genius musician, and he wow. still is. A guy named uh, Kit, Kit for George. Mm -hmm. And those uh, three people who were really the, the driving force behind me getting, quote unquote, into a competition. Because when I started singing, the first year I sung with, uh, with uh, Top Rank Intent, and that was out of Munich. Right. In St. Andrew's Love Corporation Band. And then from 19... 1985, uh, Carl Rose formed this band called A Tremors. And I was a member of the band. And I remember one evening, <laughs> I always go to rehearsal, band rehearsal. I'm, I'm early, I always early. I got to open the place, you know? <laughs> so, Kitford, Mosley, uh, Mr. Carl Rose, and myself, we were mm -hmm. sitting on the step. And I was just sitting there with my guitar. And I started singing all these songs that I composed. And these guys just say, you got to be crazy. Those songs are your songs. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, you wrote them? I said, yes, I did wrote them. And they wow. said, no, there's something wrong with you. And they said, man, and they call me Shot Man. Those, all these guys, <laughs> I'm telling they, they call me Shot Man. And that's my, my nickname around them. <laughs> this is Shot Man. <laughs> they say, you got to take part in competition. You got to wow. go. And they start pushing me, you know. And uh, till 1986, when I, I wrote uh, La Jobless. <laughs> oh boy. La Jobless, modern day La Jobless. And I had a song called uh, Mystic. You know, and uh, there was another song that I did that year. A song titled My Faith Would Carry Me Through. Mm -hmm. but unfortunately, I didn't sing it in the competition. And I think mm -hmm. that's where things kind of went wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the sense, you know? Yes. But yeah, yeah, wow. those are the people. So, but let you know, mm -hmm. let's just do one for old time's sake here. Yeah. 87. Tanti. Tanti. Take yeah. us take take us down memory lane with those those two compositions. Well, well, in 1987, it was all planned. It was all planned. Now, before I started singing Calypso, all right, I started looking, I, I get very interested and inquisitive about my African heritage. Right. And uh, I have an uncle who I call him, you know, he's, he's, an high, he's a high priest as far as I'm concerned. He's a historian and his name is Atiba Mauto. Now, I mean, Atiba had migrated to Trinidad and returned uh, in the late uh, 70s. And uh, he, he started introducing me to a lot of African history books, you know, like uh, Malcolm X, uh, Marcus Garvey, and Steve Biko, and those kind of books. So by reading those books, I get to realize how important it was, the, the, your name, you know what I mean? And then Atiba, in, my uncle, Atiba introduced me to his African name. So I selected the name Ajamo. Well, hear what? You know what Ajamo means? I did some research. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a German means a man who fight for what fights he wants. for what so, he wants, right? Yeah, so it's like a warrior spirit. Yes. So in 1987, now remember, <laughs> in 1986, uh, Alexa, I entered the competition for the first time. That's the first time I made the final. Mm -hmm. And I came second to utter Stephen the Smokey. Okay. All right? Well, when that happened, I thought, well, what? <laughs> this is for real. Yeah. So I got to go now. I got to turn up the heat, you know? So that's when I wrote this song called Calypso Warrior, which, which is depicting my, my, depicting my character. That's you understand? Right. That's right. Man, you know, and I came up <laughs> like a warrior with this shield of the sword, you know? And, oh yes. my God, that's, that's where everything. <laughs> I'm just transform. <laughs> I'm seeing it now. I'm having visuals. You, That's you know, right. I'm Captain America. You go like Captain Canada there, right? 
Oh yeah. Shield yeah, yeah. and <laughs> I'm going to capture the face. Whoever in the way get out. That's the I blast was, I was only the smoke. Wow. <laughs> so I want you to let your lips on your tummy. This time wouldn't be so easy. So if they only decide to talk about me, well, tell them it's a different story. Because when I come in town, I come in to capture the owner. And with my soca rhythm, I could make the blind see and the lame walk. Go check it. Check it. Wow. <laughs> and clearly, the Queen's Park Pavilion went wild. Oh yes, oh yes. And and this had become almost like a ritual. Wow. <laughs> From then, you know, because it was whoever with rival you know and that's how queen's Park had become yeah. you know yeah so the, the thing the, the place was transformed i mean grenada was transformed calypso wise yeah and uh, that gave us many decades of of some top top calypsonians and some top calypsos as well talk and i mean i'm a little good you're talking about wow I'm a little girl growing up and I can tell you at that stage of my life talk about you you sing along and and half of the times the lyrics and the lyrical content they were so deep so at mm-hmm. a, a, a child would not comprehend but mm-hmm. but there was just something that made you gravitate to to the words of your song and, That's and right. the melody and all you know is you're singing along you're <laughs> singing along and those were the wow well that's what calypso used to be those yeah. uh, those were the days you know because yeah. calypso is just a beautiful art form you know yeah. and uh the more you you you, you try to simplify it is the less tasteful it has become you know what i mean because yeah. calypso as you say a lot of times the, the things that you're singing you wanna even show you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but to catch on to it yeah. you know but calypso had twists and turns you know and uh, after a while now you had to be you had to be crafty in your in your in your, you know in the art and that's what that's what used to elevate you but after a while people started to become what you call raw yeah so instead of uh, i may want to sing a song about lexon but i will never say lexon fletcher yeah. i will say that beautiful tv host <laughs> and then everybody would know who i'm talking about but after this went out the window and people start saying lexon fletcher yeah <laughs> yeah <Period. laughs> yep yeah so they didn't leave you any room to imagine or think yeah. you know what I mean? so they Put just your brought own it twist out. to it yeah yeah I wow. think that that started becoming the demise of our culture. Yeah. I realized the whole tough an argument was just to get me out of my elements. But while you cry me down, it is rather strange. Oh, your lyrics never change. No, it's over two decades now. You paying well by only singing songs about Dr. Mitchell. But every time I come with a sweet refrain, you cry out worry again. But when it comes down to sweet melody and a catchy phrase, I know I've got that thing to make you pause real. But when it's time for a spicy performance and some good lyrics, you know for sure the king man right in the mix. But when I mix good lyrics with sweet music, Let's touch a little bit on on your pride and joy. I know you're sitting oh. you're sitting comfortably in in the space where you create magic and everything <laughs> comes to life. So we're oh, talking yeah. about your music and your art and and then family, your support system. Oh. You know the family. Talk a, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your pride and joy. Well, my I mean my family. That's that's about the most valuable thing that I could even think about. You know, um, I, I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm blessed first and foremost 
well, my parents, you know, my parents, so they, they were very good people and they, they brought me up right. Yeah. But I was blessed with a, with a wonderful lady for a wife, you know, and listen, one day I was reading. <laughs> now, I, I read in the Bible, I read a lot of proverbs. I like proverbs and some. And I think it was proverbs I was reading one day. And I saw something in there that speaks about a virtuous woman. Uh-huh. So I said, hold on a second. So I got up from where I was with the Bible and I went wherever my wife was. I don't remember where she was sitting. And I gave her the hand of the Bible and I said, read that. She said, what? I said, read it. And I show her the passage she read. And when she read it, she looking at me. I said, you don't get it? I said, that's you. That's you, yeah. <laughs> I said, wow. that's you, that's you, the Bible speaking about. Because, I mean, that woman, Lexa, wow. I mean, I just say, I have like three wives in one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she's like three persons. <laughs> and my kids, my kids, I'm blessed with such, such wonderful kids that, you know, I don't know if there is anything I could ask for better than that. So they're my pride and joy. Absolutely. Are you a grandfather <laughs> yet, sir? Oh, yet? Yeah. Let's yet. see. Long time. I have a long time. I got six grandkids. Oh, wow. I got six grandkids. Oh, wow. Five beautiful granddaughters and one grandson. Oh. Um, if you look up on my, my WhatsApp profile, you're going to see two little people. I think I spotted <laughs> them. That's, that's a that's fraction my, of... My twin, that's my twin granddaughter. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Yeah, so lovely. Yeah, man, they have, they, and they, they, they're just adorable, you know, all of them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's wonderful. And I know family is everything to you, but I also know that there is another, you know, there's mm-hmm. another, a, I don't want to say a, a force, but... It is a force. When you think about it, powerful forces, family and your passion for music. And I know you have your uh, studio. A little earlier, I mentioned that you're sitting comfortably in your yes, yes. space. Yes, yes. In my recording <laughs> studio. Yes. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, you know, your, your studio and, and how much time you spend there, who you work with, who, who you've probably inspired as well, who, who mm-hmm. popped into that studio and shared stories with you, that sort of thing. Well, Lexi, I must say, uh, in, a, in a material sense, yeah. I think uh, my recording studio is about my most valuable asset. Yeah. Uh, because when I started out as a musician, <clears throat> I always wanted to be a producer. You know, I wanted to be someone who, who creates, who make music, you know, and I wanted to have that uh, luxury of being able to record myself, you know. So one of the, the goals that I set from a very, very early stage was to uh, pursue a recording studio. And, I, and not just a recording studio, but a proper one. And finally, God bless me, and I think I got, I got a proper studio. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> This is I call here I call here my sanctuary, and I have I have two recording studios. I got this uh, top level, uh, the Grenada Lake, and then I have a branch also in Virginia, where I live in Virginia, Virginia Beach. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. And this I call in both places my mm-hmm. sanctuary. Yeah. So when I'm here, if if I I'm having problems sleeping in the night. <laughs> I would get up. It doesn't matter what the clock says, <laughs> but I would come in here and I would, I would make music. I would work on music. I would do things. And uh, fortunately for me, getting caught up here during the pandemic, you know, uh, back in 2020, I lost my dad in April of 2020, April 2nd. And this was a very, very tough period for me. Being the place being on lockdown and then have, having to mourn my dad all by myself. Yeah. If it wasn't for this place, this studio, and the, this lovely, all these beautiful gifts that I have musically, I don't know how I would 
figure that out because I remember one time I said to my wife, I think I would have to get some counseling mm -hmm. because it was tough. But you know what happened, Lexi? I just become this mad scientist musically. <laughs> and I got in here, I started looking for stuff that I started long time. And wow. you know what? I end up mixing two albums. <laughs> wow. A reggae album, which is out now, and a Calypso album, which I, I, I never released. And you know what? I decided not to release a Calypso album because of the, the nature of the songs that, that the album contained. It was a party album. Yeah. And uh, I am seeing myself now. I'm making this uh, transition now within my life spiritually. I'm really mm -hmm. trying to get connected spiritually. And I, I don't feel too comfortable doing some of the things that I used to. Yeah. So I decided that I'm going to put the Calypso album on hold. Yeah. Well, not just hold, but cancel, a cancellation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I give away some of the songs. I sold some of them. Wow. And I, and I recently released two that I thought that, you know, my heart feel good about. One song is entitled Love of the Mountain, and this one is dedicated to the lady of my life. <laughs> oh, yeah, but the studio... It, it's therapy for you. It's, it's therapy for it's me. Therapy. And, yeah. you know, I get, I had the opportunity, or, and I keep having the opportunity because thank God, even what I went through, but I'm still very, very, uh, in t very much intact with uh, my skills and production and everything like that. And I had the opportunity to work with a lot of people. You know, and uh, some some are not from Grenada. Some some of the artists that I work with, and, and more lately, you know, I've been working with quite some people from on the outside. You know, great. So um, this, I don't I don't know how to <clears throat> describe this more than a blessing. Yes, <laughs> let's yes. say it's a blessing. <laughs> yes, it it is. I mean, just just think of that moment of of you know. That depressed state that you were in and, and oh, being yes. able, be, you know, there's, it's always good to have somewhere to turn or someone to turn to, turn someone to. to turn. you know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and That's yes, right. blessed mm -hmm. indeed. And, and speaking of blessed, um, I know a lot of your fans, a lot of, of folks who follow your work, follow your journey, um, would have been touched by the story of you facing adversity and and if if i can say your demise straight in the face mm -hmm. you know um based on on being diagnosed um was it in 2015 or 2016 2016 August 2016, 2016 yes. with with the guillain barre uh, uh, syndrome mm -hmm. um i know you've shared this journey already but i for me uh, with this platform and with our conversation today I think one of the key things that I would love for you to share is how has that moment in your life impacted you for the future? Yeah. Now, what's happening with you? How has how the experience impacted you? Well, that had so much uh, diverse impact on me in different ways. Eh? Yeah. Because one thing is I had to, I had to come to that, that place where of a acceptance yeah to a certain extent because not not accepting that okay that things going to be like this yeah. but accepting the fact that i have to deal with this all right and even though the doctors they said okay there's there's a slim chance that you you may not come back a hundred percent you know but in myself i just feel it's gonna happen i don't know when yeah. but so many things had changed uh, for me alexa and, uh, you know, I always say, well, I heard this from someone before or in a book or somewhere, I read it. You do something about the things that you can change. If you can change something, you do something about it. Those things that you cannot change, you leave it up to God. All right. All right. Because God has the power to change any circumstance, any situation. Yeah. But... I know what I could do and I know what I cannot. So it is my duty now 
to put myself in a state of mind that I am not as a, as a, as a was, you know, like in 2015, you know, I have a lot of limitations because of what I've been through. Up to this point, I still unable to, that beautiful smile I once had, it's gone, <laughs> you know, yeah. but I'm not going to cry over that because I am going to celebrate the fact that I was able to come back that far away. And God has uh, granted me one of the most important things that I could have asked for, apart from me uh, being alive. Because it wasn't too much about me being alive. I thought I was going to be alive. But one of my biggest care was, or I shouldn't say one, but my biggest care was whether I'm going to be able to play again. You know, <laughs> and God has not taken away anything for me with, in regards to that, except I think maybe some things were, were added on to that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I still making beautiful music based on what people are saying, you know, and I, I, I find my way around the studio very good, even though. I may have a little bit of issue with uh, what did I do yesterday? Where did I put that? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, yes. but I'm, I'm getting by, you know, and I am so grateful. And uh, words cannot express in terms of my gratitude towards, towards uh, the people around me who, who've been so, so supportive, you know, my family, you know, who have been to thick and thin with me and some days I really I really have some dumb days you know at times you know people seen me like so, but they wouldn't even imagine you know yeah. they wouldn't imagine what I sometimes go through on a day-to-day -day basis but I get up every day I give thanks yeah. and I just do what I can do you have to <laughs> yes and you know what you know the mindset you know, the mind over matter saying it, I firmly believe in it, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I think if you say today, I'm, I'm not going to let this bring me down. I'm going to try mm -hmm. my best to keep pushing. I'm going to try my best to go in the studio. I'm going to do what I got to do. <laughs> do what makes me happy. Yes, yes, and, yes. And, you know, it, it's incredible. The mind is so powerful. Well, Lexi, I tell you, I'm a living testimony of that because I'm yeah. telling you, when, when I was, uh, I was flown back to Virginia Beach yeah. from Canada. And I remember the first couple of days, my, my brothers, I, I got some brothers living outside of Washington. And three of them, they came by. Congo, Bunny, and Willie. And they was... At the time, I was unable to, to move, yeah. do anything. But my senses were always intact. Yeah. And I look at three of them standing over my bed. <laughs> and they're looking at me. And I could see in their face, you know, what they were thinking. <laughs> and I said, in my frail <laughs> little <laughs> voice, I said, hey, you're good. Don't worry about me, you know. I walking out here alive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them that, and you know, Lexi, when when I came out oh, of rehab right. and they came back to visit, right? Yeah. And I asked them, I said, seriously, what? Tell me, what? What you guys thought? They said, boy, you were right, you know. They said, we thought we were going to lose you. <laughs> yeah. You know, but if, if you if you fake, they say. What you feed your mind with is what's going to shape your characteristic. So if you think positive, you know, you could get positive outcome out yeah. of those thinking. And it's so if you feed your mind with negative thoughts, you know, you, you, will, you will endure that. And I will, let me tell you a story. One of the songs that have been most instrumental during my recovery was a song I did. I don't remember what year I did it, but it's a song entitled Until My Walk Is Over. Uh -huh. Now, how I end up, how I've been inspired to write the song 
it was my eldest daughter, Natalie. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I had this problem now, and we, people doesn't know that, but I have, I have some health issues that I never knew I had. Right. So I started feeling sick, you know. It started in Trinidad. I was working in the tent, and one day I passed out in the bathroom, and I was hemorrhaging, and I was rushed to the hospital in Trinidad. Mm-hmm. And uh, immediately after that, I went back up to Virginia so I could get looked after. And uh, they couldn't figure out what was wrong, you know, and I keep going by doctors, but I had this feeling, I just wasn't feeling well. Yeah. And one day I said to my daughter, I said, I don't know, but I feel one of these days I'm not going to get up. And what? <laughs> Lexan, she, I could have seen the anger in her face, you know, from what I just said. Yeah. She rebuked me in a way that I never heard her. She said, Daddy, what's wrong? She was angry, you know. She said, you're not supposed to speak like that. She said, don't speak like that. You, you have no pause over you. what are you going to wake up or not. You, you, what, what are you talking about? Because them don't want to hear that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And after the dust settled, you know, I started thinking and I said, you know what? She right, you know, because it's not for me to say, you know, the final saying is is God, because, you know, sometimes some people try to end their life, but they didn't get, (laughs) that's just not the time, (laughs) you know? And and then that inspired me to write the song until my work is over. Mm -hmm. And this song eh, had been so instrumental in terms of uh, me accepting, you know, what is happening to me, where I've been. So I just celebrating life, Lexa. Like right. You know, I just right. celebrating life in every way. And I just want to be happy within myself and whatever come, come. But I know yeah. when the bell ring, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready. Wow. <laughs> be ready. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of... Uh, of anything because I think my life I live my life you know and I try to live it to the fullest enjoy what I do and be at peace with myself and what is more important than that you know what I mean I'm sure that that whenever we we exit that we leave a lasting legacy you know Mm -hmm. I know you're gonna leave on (laughs) somewhere somewhere or the other but I ain't going nowhere until my world I'm gonna do the best I can I'm gonna be a full brave and strong Can't let the system hold me down But when my work is over That is when I lay me down For nothing more and nothing less Still charge I put my soul to rest Achieve any achievable goal One needs to put in a great effort And display the ultimate in self-control Your ambition must never fall short Because in failure there is no redress To succeed you got to impress When asked if you can, the answer must be yes Because this is the key to success Respect your peers and your elders Be humble in every way Pay attention to your teachers And take it to what they say Groups and gangsters you must avoid For they will lead you astray Strive to begin fully employed And you shall succeed one day What would you say is, is one of the best pieces of advice you would have received? 
You mean from someone? From someone, anyone. Whether mm. it's about career, whether it's about life, anything. Well, I receive a lot of good advice. Yeah. And some, 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 we call it good advice too, but you know, <laughs> talking about those good ones. I think it's uh, uh, when my grandmother said, Edson, you give what you want to receive. Try to give what you want to receive. And I think uh, I'd, I'd, left, I'd live my life with that kind of principle, you know what I mean? And my thing is, I like making people happy, you know? And that's the reason why you wouldn't hear me within my songs or anything like that, uh, attacking somebody's character. Because I, I, I know, I'm quite aware that we all have a little faults here in some way or the other. And sometimes I could end up being in this situation as that person, you know? So what you want to do is uplift people instead of, you know, battering them down. So I had, I had patterned my life with that principle. And I think this might be one of the most valuable, valuable uh, advice that I could remember. Anybody from, from Granny. From Granny. Yeah. <laughs> Give what you want to receive. <laughs> I, I truly admire you. And like I, I mentioned earlier, I, I admire the fact that you can remain so humble. Uh, and, and you've just gained points again and you know why i'll tell you why because you just said that you prefer to make feel good music as opposed to penning something that just pulls someone down or you know and and you know i i know there are other people who have different you know people, you know as artists they all have different styles but but that to me speaks of true character and, and like I said, your game points are good. I, I really admire that. Well, I admire thank you. That. <laughs> I admire that. Thank you no, very much. And, yeah, and, because next year, man, come back. Sometimes you could switch it and, and just imagine the joke is on you. You know, because you laugh, you may, somebody may be going through some, something and you laugh. And you know, sometimes they say words are very powerful. You could speak words to people and they could feel doomed. They could go hang themselves on a tree because of those words that were spoken. Yeah. And then you could also speak words to people that would uh, deter them from that bridge that they were about to jump off. You know, so I always ask myself, what what if the joke is on you? If, what if it's you the person laughing at? What if? Instead of you laughing at someone. What if that person is laughing at you? What if you're the subject of the laughter? Well, how would you feel? True. You know, so I, I kind of live with that principle and I try to teach those values to my kids, you know? Yeah. Say, okay, but you know, he, he fell down. You, you shouldn't be laughing about that. Go try to help him. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, member of the British Empire, I think nine, I, well, you've won nine times in... in the, the art form Calypso you your blessed father husband your studio you continue to do what you love to do despite of you know all the setbacks that, that you would have faced years ago and I'm saying all of this to ask you something and that question is in your words what would you define as success. Okay, well, before I answer that last question, let me say this, all those things that you say, a father, you know, people think that I'm a good father, people think that I'm a good husband. Well, people think that I'm this you know, well-rounded musician and a writer and a composer. But I say all those things, there are so many people who deserve the credit for, for me, you know, getting the spotlight with those things because my wife made me look like a good father, <laughs> you know. <laughs> my wife made me look like a good husband, you know, even I may not be, but yeah, I'm my wife. And the kids too, because uh, they made things easy for me in a sense, you know I mean? I didn't have to fight with them. So when they turn out to be, uh, good, good subject of you know, 
it yeah. it looks like maybe I'm doing a good job, but they they're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but but other people, but for me, eh, and I've been honest, I don't define success as how much money that I have in the bank. Uh, the I don't know the word accolades. What 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 the Please. word? Is? Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Okay, not that, but I define my success as how my family, the status of my family, where my family is at. How strong is the family unit? How successful are the kids? How, they, how, how well are they doing? And you know what? For all those, I can beat my chest and I could say <laughs> that I'm a successful man because it's not about the amount of music that I make and how many people that I reach over the world and where I have been and how much people I've, I've sung to. Yeah. But when I look now, my, my last daughter, she, she just uh, celebrated 28 years on the 23rd of this month, right? right. Jamila. And she is a doctor. She's uh, one of those people who look after your eyes. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. At 28, eh? At 28. Wow. And she, she, I mean, and she's what, uh, maybe two, going on three years, you know, in, as a doctor. Excellent. And uh, all the kids, I have seven of them. Yeah. They all, uh, they, they just give me so much to be proud of, you know, so much to be proud of that I think that's my success right there, being able to, you know, to guide these these kids in some kind of way to yeah. stay focused, much less in this world that we are okay. living in now. Because hey, hats off to the parents, you know, the parents who've been able to keep their kids in a you know under a certain light, you know what I mean? Hats off because it's not easy to do this now. You got you, back in my days, there were no YouTube, no, no Facebook and WhatsApp and all those things. Okay. Now we got distraction. You know, that's so, the word. That's yeah, the we word. got distraction. Makes sense. <laughs> so for the, 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 the kids now that who, who you know, nobody perfect, but if you, they could hold the steering wheel. Yeah. You yeah. Had to say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who to that? I'm and sorry. then, uh, well, my, when I say the family, my wife, you know what I mean? Because I just, on the 27th, it was my 58th. 58 that is not 55 zero five eight 58 mm -hmm. birthday <laughs> and I also celebrated with uh, Mrs. Mitchell 31 years wow. as a married couple yeah congrats so, congratulations thank you very much wow. so that too I would uh I would attribute those as to as as being as success you know because yes. No, it's not even easy. I see people <laughs> they get married and before the first two years, they you know they things weren't so nice. You know, a lot of people separate people married four or five times. Yeah. But I say if you've been able to to stay within a marriage for 30 years, this should be a success story. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I like that. I like how you say that. Oh, yeah, it yeah, should be yeah. a success story. It should story. be a success story. <laughs> I like that. I like yeah. that. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, so that that's yeah. what it is for me. You yeah. know, I mean, it's not how much friends that I made over the years and how much, yeah. uh, you know, the money in the bank and nothing like that. You know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you. So we're getting close. We're getting close to the finish line. We're getting close uh, to the finish line. And, you know, and, when, and, I, when I'm talking to people like you, you know, I wish that wouldn't happen. But. <laughs> Thank you. Next Thank thing, you. Let me tell you this now. I have a, a, a confession to make. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. I have a confession to make. For as long as I've known you, all right, you were one of the people where every time I see you, it's like, okay, I got a Christmas toy. <laughs> I just got something. I just got a gift or something, you know, because. The, your face, you know, I never see, I've never seen you without that pleasantness, that oh. that look on your face. I've never seen you with a front face or anything like that. Oh, and you. I know a few people like that, you know, but you, you're way up at the top. Oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> My confession is thank you. 
you one of my favorite people in the world. Oh, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, you are. You're welcome. I appreciate that. I appreciate that confession. I'm blushing here like a schoolgirl, but I appreciate <laughs> the confession. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you know what? It's kind of like you. You know, sometimes you have to you have to keep smiling despite the adversity oh, yes. and, and despite the tough times. You know. And sometimes you have to put other people before, you know, e even when you're going through what you're going through. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I guess I have these where I'm down. But uh, listen, by the way, this is not we all do. Me today, okay? <laughs> we all do. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, and, and to end things off in, in, in a couple fun ways, I mean, I know you have lots of fans and followers and friends. What's that one name? or a nickname that everyone would usually call you when they see you. I know you said some men used to call you short man back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I know but that was, that was, that was it has to be King Man, right? King Man is the most popular uh, I knew it. nickname that... Well, I, sometimes I think my name is King Man now. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to add it. Edson... Ajamo, Ajamo, King Man, King Man, Mitchell. Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to add that one. I think you have King, to add that one in. I and, wouldn't mind that. <laughs> and, and for you, I know music is therapy. I know music makes your heart happy. I, I, I know being in the studio is your happy place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, is there anything else that you would do? What, how would you describe a perfect relaxing day for you? A perfect, perfect relaxing, relaxing day. day for you. Well... That's we used to be river fishing without a doubt. Right? I love fishing in the river, but since my my illness, yes, I'm unable to to uh, do the same. And uh, one because I used to uh, most times I would go fishing by myself, and then I had a couple of fishing buddies that I used to go with, which is not a smallie was one of them. Smallie is too busy now. Yes. And Koro is not so, you know, Koro is another one. And now my, my, my family, they wouldn't dare. Yeah, I cannot go to the beach by myself. Yeah. You know, they, no, they, you're not supposed to go to the beach by yourself because yeah. it's supposed something happen, you know? Yeah. So that now has gone off as this is not something that I could do as for relaxation. But the most relaxing thing for me is uh, playing my guitar. I know. You know. So because if if I'm upset, I reach for that thing and I play, and then I don't. What upset me again? What was that? I mean, when was that? <laughs> then I don't remember. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Therapy boy. Therapy. Yeah, I mean, I love I love the guitar. <laughs> That's that's my love right there. That's my, I know, that's and you know, I really I want you to take out take us out of the interview with you just doing something on your guitar, but. I have a bonus question for you, sir. Let's think about mankind now. What is your hope? Mankind. What is your dream? How would you like to see the world shift back into some form of, I know normal is a, is a pretty, you know, exhausted word now, but I'm going to use it today anyway. How, what do you see? Your vision. For lack of a better word, eh? all I could say is love. Love is a binding cord, you know. People start uh, caring more, you know. People start caring, care about people, you know. What I mean, show love because with that, everything falls in place. Love is the binding cord that holds everything. So when we 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 tend, I think the world has become too selfish, you know. People has become too too much about themselves. And not about oh, how do I be my brother's keeper? Because here, you know, man will tell you, okay, I don't wear masks. And I'm not wearing no mask, you know, because you say, why? Because I don't like masks, you know? But if you think about the people around you and how, you know, you could, because you might be, you know, exposing somebody to something. But you wear a mask, you probably could be protecting somebody and yourself from getting it. So let's be less selfish. So if, what, I don't like doing this, but I would do it for, my, for humankind. I would do it for my brother. Yeah. You know, so I think that more than anything, I would like to see people more, more caring. Caring, because caring is love. Love is caring. 
So I say love. Love is a binding card. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. And I'm saying thank you again because, you know, I'm really happy that I got the opportunity to connect with you for, for this, the Monarch series. Of course, we're celebrating, you know, past winners in various disciplines in, in carnival, specifically, you know, Queen Show, Soka mm. and Calypso. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and I just want to say thank you, sir, for, for your commitment over the years, for following your passion, for following your dreams, and for creating music that is meaningful and uplifts the mood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank and like you. I want to say to you that this opportunity is always open to you. Whenever you need me, you need, want to talk to me, you just Thank call you. me and I will do whatever in my powers <laughs> Thank to you. make sure that I get to talk to you. Thank you. Sir. You are just a wonderful person and people like you, I, would, I don't mind talking to you all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. You're so welcome. Much. Thank you. I, I appreciate you. it. I appreciate that so much. You what welcome. a lovely You're touch. Welcome. And all the best and take good care of yourself. Keep Thank you very care. much. Thank keep you doing again. what you're doing and keep on I, smiling. I will. Thank you so much. You're a blessed woman. Thank you. Bye bye. Take good care. Bye bye. <laughs> Well, that's it for this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget to share this conversation with your friends and family. Don't forget our YouTube channel. Check it out and subscribe today. And just to let you know, we're going to be wrapping up the Monarch series pretty soon. But have no fear. Come in the future. We'll get to share lots of great content and conversations with you past monarchs, specifically in the areas of Queen Cho, the Maj Gras, and the Sokra Monarch well, Thank you so much for stopping by, liking the page. I really appreciate all your comments. And if you're new to the page, welcome. Don't forget to uh, check out all the great content we have on this platform. And don't be shy. If there's someone you'd like to see me feature right here on like Sam TV, feel free to make a suggestion today. Until next time, don't forget, this is Lexan TV, where it's all about Take care. Have a great week ahead. Bye. Tell them, let them know. My middle name is Calypso. With good lyrics, melody, and tempo.